Good morning everyone and welcome back to another video. Uh, it is currently the 23rd, Wednesday the 23rd of March and um, I'm sure everyone at this point, I think everyone is in the UK, having a lovely heat wave. It's glorious. It's half eight in the morning and I'm in a jumper and I'm warm. Normally at half eight in the morning, need a jacket. Anyway, this fan. I'm going to be doing some work on this fan. I did start briefly yesterday. I took a little before shot on Instagram. I'll stick that in now. Uh, it's a 2007 56 plate um, Transit Mark 7 Transit. Nothing special. Done nearly 200k. She just wants a little um, modification to it, really, uh, which is good because it's keeping me, keeping me um, not all my money disappearing from travelling down south a couple of times. I've done it now. <laughs> Uh, especially with fuel prices at the minute. Uh, yeah, it was an old network rail van, as you can probably tell. There's a window this side, there's a window that side that opens at the top, little sliders. Uh, it's got those vents and lights on the top from where it was a network rail van, and it's got really awful electrics from when it was a network rail van. Although I don't think, judging by all CJ's videos and stuff, it's not quite as bad as ambulances. In fact, I can tell you, it's not that bad. Um, but it's still a bit annoying. And because uh, it's already kitted out, she just wants sort of it moving a bit and the electrics organising a bit. Um, I'm going to have to do nothing but just sort of cut the wires and leave them in the wall. I can't pull them through because it's already converted. I was doing it from scratch, I'd just rip it all out and start again. But sadly I'm not, so I'm going to do my best to tidy it all up. It does have the Urban Spatula heater. I'm going to keep the same control panel but I'm moving it. So let's take a look inside the van and I'll show you what I mean by all this. So I think uh, it's my mum's friend basically and I think she uh, moved the kitchen from here where this painted line was. So the kitchen was here and uh, it, it took up a lot of the room. When you have the kitchen there it shortens the van even more which sometimes you don't want. It had nothing really there, maybe a little seat on top of that heater I think. Um, and then there was just this wheel arch box there um, which I think is way too big. I, I think it was more of a toilet box. Oh no it's not a wheel arch box, it's just a storage box. So yeah, but now the kitchen's going here, this is the fridge, uh, it's a 12 volt 240 fridge and it's not a compressor fridge, it did come with the van when she bought it, um, but yeah we're keeping that panel there that's up there because that is to do with the diesel heater, um, just there is the diesel heater controls, we're keeping these switches and uh, I'll probably just re relabel them, that end one is actually the fridge, I had to work it out, um, there's all of that mess in there which has been tampered with when it was converted into a camper but they just bodged taped wired onto other things oh it's an awful mess as you can see there's like tape hanging off one wire there and stuff um, but yeah so I'm gonna rip all this out and uh, there was this cut off thing I don't know what it is it's a relay and uh, what did it say on the side battery guard 200 auto reconnect and it's something to do with the ignition. Oh, I was going to show you. And the batteries were here in between these metal posts. And I think that was all original. This wall's coming out. Uh, we're going to build two separate bulkheads so you can walk through. Um, and then the two batteries are going there. And there's going to be a bench seat there. Uh, because obviously the kitchen's here. That way, because it's going to be in Spain, this van, a lot of the time. You can sit there and look out the sliding door. And then also look out the window if you want to. Whereas if you had the kitchen, transit vans are really low. Their windows, so your kitchen would cover off that window. So, it's only a good idea having the seat there, I reckon. And um, this box is all going to go. I'm just going to remount the electrics in the bench seat and then they have that control panel on the front, like that. Um, and then all that storage for, for bits and bobs. So, this isn't going to be a very thorough <laughs> conversion by all means. It's, I, I'm just doing it. I thought I'd best film it because this van I'm getting and stuff and I think I'm going on holiday in April um, yeah I, I think I'm gonna run out of video so I just thought might as well uh, film this because then I've got uh, an extra video to to just log in um, it won't be the best and uh, if you don't want to watch it don't watch it I'm just sort of releasing it just so I get to release a video uh, because I like that sort of thing I'll probably just stick you on time-lapse around about here looking into the van and I'll just sort out the electrics, that's my job for today, sort out the electrics, um, possibly get the electrics back working again because they disconnected it all. So, um, 
someone in my uh, building Lenny when I bought Lenny video, I can't remember who it was, commented that they'd like to see the track saw in use. And this is the first time I've been able to use it on a van. Also, it's now short weather. <laughs> it's the same day, just a bit later on. I had to go to the shops. Um, yeah, so I will do that right now. This battery is very cold. The shed is uh, well in the corner in, in amongst a load of trees. So everything in the shed stays cold for hours. Uh, this bit is over one and a half meters. So I'm gonna, it's my first bit doing it in um, two lengths because I've only got one and a half meter track saw. Um, so we'll see how it goes. So I'm just, I've literally just marked three lines purely because the track isn't long enough. I'm gonna set the depth on the circular saw with the track saw base. You can always give it a check by checking the wood itself. Yep, that's about right. Check my lines are still intact. Yep. And then you just place it on the track. And I tell you, this thing is like a mains powered saw. Ready? <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> you would have expected the second it hit the wood to go, Meow. it doesn't. It just eats it. So there you are, super straight and super tidy. No chips. I mean, I know that's because it's pretty much a brand new blade as well. But uh, yeah, proper job. <laughs> I love it. It's a game changer. With a jigsaw, I'd still be there now cutting it, and then it wouldn't be perfectly straight. It's amazing. I love it. I'll show you the rust that I discovered yesterday. So all these bits are okay. All okay. Apart from there's a hole there, which is pretty bad. There is a big hole there, which is very bad. This had been... Uh, painted before but I think they just ground it back and put any old paint on it wasn't rust prevention because it literally just peeled straight off and there was rust beneath it and more holes and then over here there's also another hole uh, I don't know if you can see that one there there's the other hole so yeah it's pretty holy this transit and then it's really pitted here with even yeah holes again so wherever there's rust there seems to be a hole it's quite bad um, and I've only done this side so far, and then there's some filler that needs doing here because it's dented. Sort of see. So, yeah, well, I'm going to prioritise the inside, and then I'll get back to this um, another time. But for now, yeah. So I'll come back to you once I've put up this. It's just be a few more tracks or cuts. I'm going to do a straight line up here till it hits about here, and then do an angled one up to the top. So, this is what I got done yesterday. So I got this wall in, as you can see. Um, the handle goes here, and you can't open it now, so you're gonna have to cut a bit out, uh, including that screw. Take the batten out as well, so there's like gonna be a little cut out. I'll make it look nice, um, but yeah, that's what I'm gonna have to do. Um, and then I've got this part bulkhead in as well. And then down here, as you can see, got a bench seat in. So I mounted the original control panel there. As you can see, same switches, same everything. Um, and I didn't actually have to jigsaw out a gap here. I just uh, put a bit of pallet with a cross, top and bottom, and then either side, and it just fit in perfectly. So uh, yeah, that was good. And then I just cladded the rest with pallet wood and then these are just little 12 mil pie tops which I'm going to put a hole in like a little finger hole so you can lift it up properly uh, and they'll be hinged as well so you can open them like so and voila so yeah uh, my first job for today is uh, hinge them uh, and drill a hole in them and then 
My next job is get all the electrics working and hooked up. That's the split charge positive cable from the starter battery. Uh, and then if I've got time uh, at the end of today, it'll be do some of the rust on the outside. The kitchen, I still don't know because there's still no cooker and sink. Uh, and that's a big sort of uh, controlling factor of the kitchen. So that's going to still have to wait a bit. Okay, so after quite some time, we're back on this transit. Uh, the next video, uh, I had another transit come in for a bit. Yeah, it was another transit. <laughs> um, but that one's now, uh, well, I've still got a last few bits to do on that with bits that are coming. But we have the sink and we have the cooker. Uh, just not <laughs> right here, but um, yeah. So the sink's gonna go there. There's gonna be a small gap here. Uh, it's gonna have to step up because of this because down here is a bit too low for a countertop uh, it might be okay but also it's like whether because it's a grill hob whether it will fit on top of the fridge um, the sinks obviously going under the pullout of the bed uh, I'm just debating because it's a ceramic one a bit like a Belfast sink whether to show the front or not um, I'm always thinking it would be easier to show the front of it rather than not to show the front of it so I might show the front of it <laughs> Um, yeah, and then there's a small little gap for a little cupboard in between um, that box, which will be coming out, that box, and I might butcher it to make dividers and stuff. Uh, I'll probably use it for something else. But yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit weird because, yeah, it shouldn't really be there. Yeah, but solar's all working, up and running, all the electrics are running. Can't remember if I showed you the lights. Got lights. I think I did, because they're remote control. Um, with the little remote uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, and you can have a disco if you fancy uh, yeah so that's that that's the stuff uh, let's get going <laughs> I did just start a time lapse but my camera died almost instantly uh, <laughs> in the time I thought it was a time lapse thing here's what I've made uh, so building a multi height kitchen is quite confusing so it goes this way in the corner so this is the bed uh, and then that's just next to the sliding door that's the pillar that ends uh, and this is where the sink's gonna go but as you can see I I put a band across here and then realized I need to cut that there did make a slight error as you can see um, but then if I add a piece of 18 mil uh, 18 by 44 the other way so only 18 mil showing the sink should fit in there nicely because it's a it's a semi Belfast sink. It's a ceramic sink from B and Q, um, but I think it'd be nice to have the front on show. So I'm going to put the front on show. Here's going to be the door underneath, and then the next length up here is going to be higher uh, because that's where it steps back up again. So back on time lapse. This time I put a full battery in. So this is what I've been doing. That's where the fridge is going. Then. Because of that pillar, <laughs> I've had to add another one this side as well. So if I put that up against there like that. The sink is this, and that fits in there. Um, and it comes level with this, because as I've already said, the idea is that uh, you have an insert over the sink. So the cutout of the uh, countertop is going to have to be quite precise to uh, because it's not like a proper Belfast sink. Like my mum's had a massive lip here, like 20 mil all the way around. So you, and like normally the metal ones also have like a 20 mil lip, so you can uh, put it on. But this has got like five mil, so you have to be pretty precise and then sealed because it's designed to go on the countertop, not recessed in. Oh well, the trickiness of building vans. <laughs> uh, so this will slide out even with a countertop up to 45mm thick. For now it's going to have ply on because the customer said that she's going to um, 
she's got a nice bit of a slab of nice wood you know off a tree but it's not dry wood it's green wood so eventually she said she, she want that in here so I've left room for that and there was no talk of a countertop so temporary ply countertop will be going on uh, the grill will be coming down to roughly the same height I think as the uh, the oven and grill uh, not oven hob and grill roughly the same height as the sink maybe just down a bit so I'll leave a small gap here which I'm thinking is quite good for a drawer um, probably and then obviously this will be battened off here as well and uh, yeah that's that's the next job is to just batten around the fridge and yeah that's not too bad these screws are amazing if the camera wants to focus yeah so they're like got a green tinge to them they're decking screws you buy them in B&Q they come in a big plastic box with like a little handle that's clear like a clear almost like a takeaway box but with some handles and uh, these are 50 mil by three or four mil and uh, these are the best screws they pull together so nicely they really don't split the wood very much <laughs> they don't really round up they're all round amazing screws yeah these are I think 50 mils so here we are it's getting there we've got the place for the sink oh, I don't really want to do that one handed actually <laughs> It's quite heavy because it's ceramic. Um, the, it's now screwed in and square and solid. Um, that is the bit of the high kitchen. There is still a couple of small buttons I need to put in here to uh, pad it out to make it to about here uh, because the sink isn't quite that big and also that would be weird because it's off centre. It doesn't have to be exactly centred but having loads of gap there and no gap there would be weird which I almost did by mistake but but it was okay because I had already accounted for that that's the thing with doing it over two days I forgot what I was doing yesterday uh, this fits lovely on here as you can see sorry for the exposure but my hand is currently holding a cooker and then yeah there's quite a decent space there <laughs> like the size of the grill uh, for a pull out drawer uh, well, drawers do pull out. <laughs> uh, and then this side, oh, maybe pallet wood. I haven't got much pallet wood left. Uh, that door's going to be pallet, just like this bench seat. But if not, I'll just have to slap a bit of ply over there. Mm, like this. Uh, this is the ply that was in the van. Uh, it's sort of on a budget, so I sort of just left them. Um, the holes, because I'm thinking that you could cover it over with something. But yeah, it's, it's getting there. So yeah, the two level kitchen here, a uh, bit higher with a countertop, like that. And then this bit is obviously quite a bit lower. The countertop will come to pretty much flush with the underside of there. The idea is then you can pull it out to there. But yeah, so getting there, I'm gonna have a cup of tea because <laughs> I've only had one or two. And, uh, and then I'll work out what I'm doing next, which is probably gonna be putting a bit of ply uh, flush behind there for the cooker to sit on and flush behind there for the sink to sit on but yeah there's still quite a bit of gap here because when the door's shut you need to get down there to the lock to, to flick it on and off um, because otherwise you can't lock it because for transits the central locking always breaks and uh, along with that they only chose to put keys on the driver's door so if your central locking breaks and you have a bulkhead I'm not entirely sure what you do break into your own van. My mum's van doesn't have central locking from factory so it has keys on all the doors and even when Ivaco's had central locking they still had keys on all the doors because it makes sense. This is why I want an old van <laughs> because it's simple. So that's it for this video. Um, the van went yesterday and I forgot to film well I was in sort of a rush because it was all last minute um, getting everything done 
Uh, there's still a couple of last bits to do, she's got to come back, but uh, we're going away, so it'll have to happen after, which is okay. But yeah, uh, I'll, I'll just put in those B-rolls of what um, it finished, like I did get a door on, um, under the sink, which I didn't manage to film that either. Oh no, wait, I did. Yeah, so I got the kitchen pretty much finished, bar a drawer and the plumbing, um, and yeah, they're the bits that need doing for next time. But yeah, so it, that was a pretty good project. Um, and uh, back to this video, back to this van, uh, video after next, because next video is uh, fitting some things to another person's van for some more work, uh, who's actually off my YouTube, so cool. Anyway, if you like the video, be sure to give it a like, drop a comment down below, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video next week.